What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Sword of Trust. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel and press that like button and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. If you love comedies about misunderstandings and misgivings and mistrust, you're gonna love Sword of Trust. On top of the fact that many of the dialogues seem to be shooting from the hip and off the cuff. I love the characters in this movie. They're the kind of people that you'd want to hang out with. Plus, the McGovern is so out there. Unfortunately though, the plot is not strong enough to carry the audience through, especially in the third act when it hits a few bumps from which it doesn't recover. Co-written and directed by Lynn Shelton, starring Mark Maron, Gillian Bell, Michaela Watkins, and John Bass, the story is about two women who show up to collect an inheritance from a deceased grandfather, only to find that the item they've received is this antique sword which may have been the only proof that the South won the Civil War. They then attempt to sell the sword to a pawn shop owner and his man-child assistant, but when the pawn owner discovers that the sword could be worth a lot more, all four of them join forces to sell the sword to the highest bidder, an endeavor that leads them to a pretty shady and potentially dangerous black market. Lynn Shelton is a filmmaker who has directed many episodes of some of my favorite TV shows over the years. She has also helmed several movies, including Hump Day, which more or less has similar results as this latest one, Sword of Trust, in that they often start out strong, but then goes downhill halfway through, with little to no payout at the end. But credit where credit is due. The concept in Sword of Trust is downright hilarious. I mean, the idea that the South may have won the Civil War. The film makes fun of conspiracy theorists and history revisionists, many of whom unfortunately actually exist, especially in this current administration led by a president who once literally praised Alex Jones. So the first half of the comedy in Sword of Trust packs a punch. I even read that many of the exchanges between the characters were actually improv. That kind of style usually comes with its risks, but in this case, when you have four leads who are highly skilled at ad-libs and coming up with their own comebacks really quick and on the fly, there's really not much problem here. Even Lynn Shelton shows up as an ex of Mark Marone's character, and they play that out really well. By the way, I love the characters. I can watch them all day. And their backstories are just as funny too. Granted, I'm not sure how much of that is on the script, and how much of that is the actor's creation, but it hella works. I've been a big fan of Mark Marone for quite some time, especially from his stint on the series Glow, and so he brings again, for this film, some of his expertise, if you will, because nobody seems to be able to pull off a grumpy, bitter, sarcastic curmudgeon as good as Mark Marone does. Having said all that, as I implied earlier, Unfortunately, the plot doesn't have what it takes to retain our interest till the very end. In fact, halfway through, it's as if the film runs out of fuel, while Mark and Michaela's characters are busy negotiating with the black market's dealer. Gillian Bell and John Bass are on the side, improvising an argument about a flat earth theory, which comes across more like a waste of time or that the movie doesn't know what to do with them anymore. The second that the four leads enter the back of the truck to go to the meetup, that's when Sword of Trust loses its grip on our attention, because that's when the wheels of the story start to come off. Which is a shame, really, because the characters are so much fun, they deserve better. But this somewhat wild journey comes to a rather unsatisfying end especially for us, the audience. 